Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and today I have another vintage quilt block for you. This one is called a Basket of Diamonds and here is my version. It goes <laughs> this way. Um, this is an on point block and this is traditionally made with diamond shaped fabrics but I changed them to half square triangles and flying geese units so that they're easier to go together. You don't have any Y seams that you have to worry about in this block. Um, the only thing is this block does not go together in rows, it goes together in sections. So in this video I'll show you how to put this block together and uh, I hope you'll join me. Okay here is a close-up look of the basket of diamonds block and we would have traditionally have diamond shapes here so I switched that to a square and then um, flying geese on the side and that created all the, the diamond shapes. So that's just an easier way to make the block. And uh, this is a 12 inch block. So let me show you the pieces that you need to make this block. So piece A, you need to cut two pieces that are four inches square and then you're gonna cut one on the diagonal so you'll have two triangles. Piece B, you need four pieces that are three and a half inches square. Piece C, you need two pieces that are three and a half inches square. And D is one four inch square. And piece E, um, you're going to cut a six and seven eighths inch square and then you're going to cut that on the diagonal. Piece F, you need four pieces that are three and a half by six and a half inches and piece G is one three and a half inches square. Now for piece D, um, you are going to draw a diagonal line on the wrong side and I have that drawn here or you need some kind of a seam guide so that you can sew on the diagonal on your machine. And I have a piece of um, glow line tape on mine and then on piece C you'll need to do the same. Draw a diagonal line on the back side of these or use whatever method you use on your machine. Some kind of a seam guide or like me using tape to uh, sew a diagonal line on those. So first thing we're going to do is make half square triangles. So we're going to take the um, A square and the D square and we're going to put those right sides together and then we're going to sew a quarter inch away from both sides of that diagonal line and that'll give us two half square triangles which are these pieces here and then we're going to trim them down to three and a half inches. Okay now I'm using a 50 weight thread and it's in the bobbin and in the needle and my stitch length is at 2.0 um, you can use whatever stitch length you like to sew with. I'm going to cut this right down the drawn line and that'll give me the two half square triangles. Okay I have my seams pressed towards the blue fabric and now I want to trim these down to three and a half inches square. So I have a rectangular ruler here or a square ruler here and I'm going to line up the 45 degree angle with the seam and I have the three and a half inch mark on the edge of the fabric here and I'm going to go ahead and trim this down. So it's just a little bit large and cut this side. It really doesn't matter which side you cut, you just have to kind of choose one whichever one you want.
Okay. So we've got those. So those pieces will go here and here. So next thing I want to do is to make the flying geese units. So now these two flying geese units are not the same. On this one here, the yellow is on my right, and on this one, it is on my left. So the blues are going to face each other. So I need to take two of these F rectangles and I'm going to take the B and the C squares and one is going to go on this side right sides together and one of the C's are going to go on the left side so they all match up here now this is one we're going to so directly corner to corner so if you want to you can draw a line on the back side of these pieces or you can just follow a seam guide on your machine whichever works best for you so we're going to sew that next so i'm going to start the center here and i'm lining up this point with the needle and then i've got this point lined up with my tape here on my machine and I'm going to just sew directly down. And then we'll do the same with this one. And this one is going to go this way. And look, look for um, the placement to make sure that you've got um, everything correct okay when this one opens when I open this one up I want it to look like this so I need the seam to go from this center to this edge so to the that corner so I'm going to put it in this direction to get everything lined up Before you trim it, um, check both of these to make sure you've got your rectangles going the right direction. So I've got this and this. So they would be on opposite sides. So now I'm going to trim a quarter of an inch away from the drawn line and you can use your you can use your scissors or your rotary cutter. Okay, so next thing I need to do is to press these open. So I'm just going to press them flat and then press the seam open. And do that on both. Okay, now I need to sew the other two uh, corners on. Okay, so now I've got two of the B squares and I'm going to sew those on and I'll do the same thing just to go from the center to the outer lower corner on the other side so let's line everything up do the other one now.
Okay, so now I want to trim off the outer corners and press these open. Now these triangles that I'm cutting off, I am going to save these. Um, you can do uh, whatever you want with them. I'm going to just go ahead and sew a seam down them after a while and then I'll have some half square triangles. But um, Okay, now I'm going to go and uh, press these open so that we'll have the flying geese units. So here are the two flying geese units. There we go. Okay, so we have two flying geese units and their colors are on opposite sides. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and lay this block out and then start putting it together. So I'll show you how I'm going to do this because this isn't a block that you can just do row by row. You're going to have to um, put it together in sections. So I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Okay, so I have all of my pieces here and it looks like a mess, but it this will go together. I'm going to start with this flying geese unit here and an F rectangle and that's going to go right here. And on this side we're going to put the G square which is here. Okay, so there's the top. Um, I need a half square triangle that will go here and you can see how it's forming the diamond there. And I need a B square that will go here. The other flying geese unit will go here. So we've got that half square triangle here, an F square. And this is an A square here. And this is the one that is cut in half to make triangles. That goes here. And then we have our large E triangle. That's going to go here. Okay, so we've got all our pieces laid out and now we've got to get them sewn together so that it creates the block. Okay, so to uh, put this together, we're going to have to do it in several steps and we're going to be doing it in units. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to sew this G square to the flying geese unit and then we're going to sew these two together and these two together. These units here. And then we will sew them together to make one big block. Then we will add this to here and add this to there. So then we'll have all of this done. And then we're going to sew the triangles to the rectangles and sew them to this unit and then lastly we will sew the big triangle. So I'm going to adjust the camera and aim it at the sewing machine and then we'll get started putting this block together. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is just sew the G square to the flying geese unit. And you can use pins if you want. I'm just going to line everything up. is that part and then I'm going to sew the half square triangles to the solid squares or the single squares pressing anything at this point but um, just sewing things together and putting them back in position and uh, then I'll do uh, the press pressing here in just a little bit 
So here are the other two. Now the instructions that come with this block, the link is in my description box and you can get your pattern there and it will explain what order you need to sew this in. Of course there are the other there are the ways you can sew this together. This is just the way that made sense to me. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and press these pieces that I have right now and I'm going to press towards um, I'm going to press these towards the single square and then sew them together. And I do have uh, points to match here so I'm going to do my best to get them lined up. See how that came out. Oh, good. I'm happy with that. It's going to lay that back. And I'm going to press I'm going to press the seam and in my original block, I pressed that seam open. So I'm going to go do the same here. Okay. So now I want to <coughs> So now I want to sew the other flying geese unit to the unit I just made. So I'm going to go ahead and line those up and I need to line I need to line up the point here of the flying geese with the seam here. So I'm checking that to see if I've got that lined up and it looks okay. So we'll see how that goes. Line everything else up. And we'll sew this. looks good so I'm going to go ahead and press and I'm going to press away from the flying geese unit. Okay, let me back up a little bit here. Okay so now I have this much done and then I have the top so this piece can now be sewn to this one so I can get hold of these two together. Here we go so we have this so I'm going to sew those together and my seams are nesting here by the G square, by the white square. Uh, so that's good. I'm going to put a pin there. And then I have this point lining up with this seam. So I'm just going to make sure those are lined up as close as I can get it anyway. Put a pin in there. Okay, now I'm ready to sew.
have that much done right there. So I'm going to press this and I'm also going to press away from the flying geese unit. Okay, so we have that much. Okay, now we're going to go down to the rectangles and the triangles and we'll place those right sides together and sew them. going to chain paste these together. So now I'm going to put these two pieces together. I have one seam to match. So um, well, uh, this seam is pressed open so I just have to line those seams up. This is not my favorite. Um, I think that's harder to line up your seams when they're pressed open but uh, sometimes that's the best thing to do for the piecing so so we just have to work with it Press that out. And now I need to add this piece, so we'll do that. And I've got a dog tail here, a dog tail. I've got a dog ear here. I'm going to go ahead and trim that off, get that out of my way. And we're going to have to do some trimming on this um, angle cut down here before we put on the white triangle, the background triangle. Okay, so now we have that. So all I have to do is add this piece on, but I'm, I'm gonna press this open and then we need to do some trimming. So let me press this and uh, I'll show you what I'm doing to trim this. Okay, I need to trim this seam allowance now. It's more than a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to line up my 45 degree angle with this line here and my quarter inch mark with the point there and we're going to trim this off and that looks 
looks pretty good, so let's trim that there. Okay, that should work. And now I need to add this triangle. Now I need to add this triangle, and I need to find the center of the triangle to match it up to here. So I'm just going to line it up with the point right here of that square. Just like that, and then I'm going to go ahead and pin it. just a couple of places. Okay, this is the last seam, so let's get that one done. All right, here we go. what that looks like. Okay. Oh, looks good. Okay. So let's do a final press and look at the block. Okay, I'm just going to press this out. Alright. So there we go. I think it turned out pretty well. So I have a couple of dog ears to trim off. So I can go ahead and do that. There we go. Okay, so there is the completed block. So this is a block that you can put on point. You could also do it square and just all of your baskets then will be kind of going in one direction. But um, you can put it on point. You can put them in rows with alternate blocks. You can put them all together. You can put them like in a circle so that all the um, basket bottoms are facing so you'd have a big square where all of these triangles meet. So there's lots of different things you can do with this block. So I hope you'll give this one a try. Well that's it for the basket of diamonds block. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it um, gave you the urge to give this one a try. Um, it only has two different colors plus a background fabric in it but of course you can uh, change the colors around put more colors in it and uh, use whatever colors you want. Um, so, you know, do whatever you want to and make this block your own. So if you like this video, please click that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and click that notification bell so you'll be notified when the next video comes up. And in the meantime, I hope you're all staying safe and healthy and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.